Welcome back to our video series. Today, we will introduce X-ray absorption spectroscopy, specifically the Extended X-ray Absorption Near Edge Structure Technique, or XSAS. The XSAS spectroscopy method, like many other X-ray absorption spectroscopy techniques, follows Beer's law. When incident X-rays on a sample are incremented, the number of incident and transmitted X-rays are recorded. An absorption edge occurs when the energy of an X-ray incident on a sample matches the binding energy of an electron within a sample atom. This leads to a significant change in the number of X-rays absorbed by the sample and a change in the transmitted X-ray intensity. Each element has its own set of absorption edges, which allows for sweeping across certain incident energies to probe different atoms edges. It is often helpful to consider the behavior of electrons with positive kinetic energy in K or momentum space. In the free atom, the kinetic energy of a photoelectron excited by a given photon energy above a certain edge is given by the top equation. K can be thought of as a wave vector or a wave number with units of an inverse length. It is defined by two pi over the de Broglie wavelength. Fundamentally, the photoelectron has a wave-like nature. This allows us to take adjacent atoms as point scatterers. This also allows the interference of backscattered electron waves with forward propagating waves. These waves result in a change in the measured absorption coefficient. The dependence of scattering on the atomic species and the chemical environment allows us to probe the chemical coordination environment about the original absorber atom. This information is revealed in analysis of XSAFs, extended X-ray absorption fine structure, and XSANS, X-ray absorption near edge structure. XSAFs is a subset of X-ray absorption spectroscopy corresponding to the oscillating part of the absorption spectrum to the right of the absorption edge, which appears like a sharp peak. Typically, XSAFs experiments start about 50 eV above the edge, and they extend as far as a kiloelectron volt above the edge. Mathematical analysis of this region of the XSAF spectra may reveal structural information and coordination spheres about an atom of focus. The fundamental physical process involves an absorbed photon ejecting a core photoelectron from an absorbing atom. The ejected photoelectron has energy equal to the energy of the incident photon minus the binding energy of the initial core electron state. The absorbing atom now has a hole in its core and has thus been excited. The ejected photoelectron may then interact with electrons in nearby non-excited atoms. The ejected photoelectron has wave-like properties, while the surrounding atoms can be described as point scatterers. This backscattering electron wave interference with forward propagating waves results in an interference pattern which modulates the absorption coefficient measured in the experiment. This yields the oscillations shown in the XF spectra on the figure on the left. The XF's equation is used to model XF's data and can be used to fit different radial distances and structures to the core XF's data. The equation is shown on the screen. N sub J is the number of atoms in the J shell. R sub J is the distance between the absorbing atoms and atoms in the J shell. F J is an ab initio amplitude function for J. And the exponential is a D by Waller factor for the shell. It accounts for damping due to thermal and static disorder in the shell. Another exponential term accounts for the losses due to inelastic scattering. The oscillations in the XF spectrum are reflected in the sinusoidal term, where B, I, J, K is the ab initio phase function for the shell J, and S naught is an amplitude reduction factor. Typically, the XF's equation is used to fit experimental data using N, E naught, 
r and sigma as variable parameters, usually keeping s not fixed. The FEF8 program from the University of Washington performs curve fitting with ab initio calculated phases and amplitudes. Other software, such as the meter program, has been used also in excess analysis. The meter is a comp comprehensive system for processing and analyzing X-ray absorption spectroscopy data. It is developed and has been maintained by Dr. Bruce Ravel of the Synchrotron Science Group at Brookhaven National Laboratory, making use of the National Synchrotron Light Source II. The Demeter software includes Athena software for data processing and the Artemis software producing XF spits. The Artemis software also allows for simulation of XF spectra from coordinate structures, often themselves optimized prior using density functional theory or other computational methods. This enables the comparison of computed models with experimentally measured spectra. The pre-edge region of an excess spectrum depends on the electronic transitions to the empty bound state and contains information about the local geometry of the absorbing atom. As such, it depends on the absorbing atom's coordination and oxidation number. The edge region also depends on the oxidation state of the absorbing ion. The main edge shifts to higher energy as the oxidation number increases. The exans region, closer to the edge, depends on multiple scattering events of the emitted photoelectrons with nearby atoms. As such, SANS provides detailed information about the local geometry of the absorbing and neighboring atoms. Such methods can be used to probe about the coordination of the sample's atoms. Model compounds of known structure can be used for comparison of different edges and modulations in the XANs and XFs regions, or for comparison of oxidation states. Remember, XFs provides information about an atom's local environment, enabling geometric analysis of amorphous crystalline solids or non-crystalline metals and materials. The information of radial distances implies a wealth of information, such as the coordination number and the disorder of neighboring atoms. Synchrotron light sources are sources of electromagnetic radiation required for many X-ray absorption or emission-based experiments. They produce high energy electron beams able to be directed by either bending magnets or insertion devices, such as undulators or wigglers. These devices provide strong magnetic fields perpendicular to the beam path, thus converting the high energy electrons into photons. Synchrotron sources are located all throughout the world and synchrotron radiation has several highly desirable characteristics. High brilliance is a measure of the photon flux able to be produced. High polarization, high collimation, and the ability to tune in energy and wavelength via a monochromator. At some locations, pulse emissions at or below the nanosecond timescale are also highly desirable for certain time-sensitive experiments. Please see our next video for more information on synchrotron and beamline operations.